Hello friends and welcome to the International Fab Talk family. We are growing by the day because we have a lot of love for the ordinary people, the common man out. We believe in truth and we believe in hard work and we believe in healing each other. And today we have a wonderful person as a psychologist, as a senior corporate psychologist. She's Monika Das Varma with us doing her best to heal people, to make people overcome a lot of their problems at the workspace and even in their personal lives. So I'd like to invite on stage today with us our special celebrity. Dear ma'am, welcome to the session. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for this talk show. Thank you, ma'am. And I actually should thank you because you accepted our invitation. Welcome. Yes. And that is a blessing for us and of course a privilege to have you to share all of your knowledge and expertise and to help other people across the world. Thank sure. you. With your permission, I'd like to go ahead and introduce you in an official way, dear. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Friends, as you all know that we always do this, we go ahead and share a bit in detail, the official details as to what ma'am specializes in, our celebrity specializes in. She is Monika Das Varma, a great psychologist. She's also the manic, managing director and chief corporate psychologist of Guidance City Enhancing Life, OPC Private Limited. And dear friends, with the expertise in dealing with corporate clients, for the last 10 years, she's been able to help them manage their lifestyle, to help them manage their workplace pressure, to help them manage their you know, relationship issues. It also could be the anxieties that they face, the inner fears that they have. And we have all of this going on in the corporate level and she takes great care. She is well known around the corporate circles as a senior corporate psychologist doing her best. She's been working in various corporate industries such as the Guidance City, Foro Life, TCS, YD, etc. She's been out there giving her best. And dear friends, she's also completed her diploma course in Nimhans. Ma'am, would you like to help me on that? Yeah, after completing my master's in clinical psychology, I have, you know, uh, started exploring different, different courses. Along with that, uh, Nimhans uh, offered uh, this uh, diploma in community mental health psychologist course in 2018 that I have completed. Yes, dear. So she's been doing that, my dear friends, with lots of effort and passion. Why? Because she would be a healer here. She would want you to reduce your stress. And of course, dear friends, she's also internationally connected. She's a member, an affiliate member internationally connected with APA, the American Psychological Association, connected with WHO, World Health Organization, and of course, giving her best also to the queer friendly community. And yes, friends, it's more than this. She is a person who's very friendly, warm. You can approach her. Not only if you belong to the corporate sector, you are allowed to meet her. Any normal individual could meet her. If you would like to have her services to connect with her, you could really go to her because she's a wonderful psychologist who focuses on bringing a balance in your life. She's well certified and trained as well and with more than 10 years of experience. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. Thank you very much for this wonderful introduction about me. And uh, thanks everyone for, you know, uh, giving me the space to talk about mental health, talk about me and my journey. Thank you, dear. God bless you. And thank you for accepting the invite because that means a lot. It will benefit many. Thank you so much. My dear friends, let's begin with the first round of the interview. Let's get to know our celebrity today. Who is Miss Monica? Monica Daswaram. Dear ma'am, how would you define yourself? Who is the real you? How oh, would you describe yourself? Okay. <laughs> it's an interesting question, by the way. Um, if you ask me, like, uh, I would like to uh, explain myself first as a psychologist, Monica. Yes, I'm a psychologist, Monica, and I have, you know, skill in this area, in corporate area for the past 10 years. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, and a proud wife of psychologist, Cora Verma. And also, along with this, I am an entrepreneur and art therapy practitioner and a good human being. I love that. I'm a good human being. All that sums up. Yep. Yes. It's time to identify if we are good human beings or not. And today our celebrity, Miss Monica Verma Das, she's identified, yes, I'm a good human being and I want to see the others good also in the society. I want to, you know, be a part of their success and their growth. Very well explained about yourself. Very well you defined yourself. I love the way. 
a good Thank human you. being. Yes, dear. Apart from being a mother, a sister, a beautiful wife, and a senior corporate psychologist, and above all, a great human being, a humanitarian. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, we've all been facing a lot of stress in our personal and as well as, you know, professional life. True. And many of us have our own ways of dealing with it, but they are not sufficient. Sometimes mm -hmm. we feel, however, we're managing it, it's not enough. We need the best techniques. So could you share from your experience, how do you personally help your clients to overcome stress, how to manage stress and anxiety? Yep. Sure. Actually, uh, stress is what? A single little change in our life can create some stress, right? And stress is not always very bad because there are two words that you, we know about it, that is distress and the eustress. Eustress is like uh, a pressure that helps you to, you know, keep going right that is good for you those kind of stresses are good for you but there are some changes in life that you know create some bad effect on your mental health or your entire well-being you are not able to sleep well you are not able to focus well you are not able to be productive enough right that is the distress we work with that particular part we help people to you know uh so that we can help them to uh, reconstruct their thoughts which are negative in nature we help them to reframe that one into positive, more rational one. We help them to uh, maintain proper sleep cycle. We help them to manage their time. We help them to be happy in a way, right? So we follow many scientific processes, many scientific techniques from CBT to RBT, DBT, right? And we apply on them. We help them to help themselves so that they can uh, overcome their challenging phase. I don't call, uh, you know, problems in life. I do call them as challenges because it looks like more sporty enough, right? When we say that, yeah, it is a challenging phase in my life. So it becomes easier for us to, you know, overcome from that area. So this is how I help them. This is how I help myself as well sometimes. Wonderful, ma'am. I'm going to take away something from you. Challenges. I'm going to change the word stress to challenges. Yeah. How to ma manage our challenges, how to face our challenges. That's a lovely way. Yes. Right, because, you know, every time we reframe some words, it plays with our subconscious mind and helps us while we are consciously doing something. So use of words are a very important thing in our life. Super. I really like it. Words could be honey, words could be poison. True, true, yes, true. Yes, dear. Thank you. Very nice. So, dear friends, we have a lovely person sharing all of her expertise today. Yes, it's time to benefit from this beautiful session. Dear ma'am, apart from the challenges now, we'd like to know about, thank you for sharing all of that which you've shared, CBT, DBT, R, and the different methods which you, yeah. you know, and I love this when you focused on the sleep cycle. You know, many of us, including me, we are sometimes disturbed with the sleep cycle. Uh, we yeah. call it stress, but actually the other challenges which we have to overcome and face. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's wonderful. Dear friends, if you have a sleep cycle disturbed because of your challenges in life, you could get connected with our special guest and celebrity. She is Monika Das Varma, a senior psychologist, corporate psychologist. Yes, ma'am. We would like to know who is the inspiration behind all of this? How did you come into the field and what inspired you and how are you continuing your journey? Yeah. You know, in my life, I have different people at different stage from my childhood till now, right? It starts with my mother and my father who are very, you know, happy-go-lucky type person. They uh, do not talk about stress. They talk, they actually talk about uh, challenges in life. So I learned that word from them. I never saw them that, uh, you know, it is a difficult moment in life and we not we are not able to overcome this thing. They never use this kind of thing. They are like, yeah, it is the tough period when... With time, we will overcome this thing. So it starts from home. Then I got inspired from my one of my uncle who used to be a doctor. Now he is not there, right? Uh, we lost them due, uh, due to COVID and all. And uh, after that, some other uh, psychologists from my colleges, like my teachers are there, like Dola Mojumdar ma'am, Ishita Chatterjee ma'am, they are there, right? Uh, so they are my inspirations. Uh, then other inspirations in my life is my husband, who is also a psychologist. He plays an, a very important role in my life. Like uh, he supports me very well, not only as a husband, but also as a psychologist. He, uh, he used to be my senior. 
right so that is why i am much more associated with him in a uh, different way from study to you know dealing with some patient uh, so these people are inspiration along with that there are two therapists uh, whom uh, i admire a lot right uh, so they are there they are my inspirations in my life what a way to give a tribute to everyone to praise everyone in your life to see the good in everyone to be inspired by everyone your parents as you said right yes. your parents are those people who never say stress they say challenges and it's a phase it will go away exactly so this... even still now uh, i'm sorry yeah please uh, go ahead no worries actually uh, you know what i have learned from my family uh, that every time we are in some trouble they are like this phase is temporary right the way the phase of happiness is temporary you need to enjoy a lot during that moment right same way the that challenging phase that is also temporary one it will take some time you need to keep patience you need to go with that phase you need to face that because this is the learning period that will make you learn something from that you know tough moment so it, that was my base that was my that is my root actually you're a lucky one <laughs> thank you yes to have parents like that you know it's a blessing a yes. big blessing many of the people out there many of us don't have that you know blessing of having parents who lead the light True. yes dear. yes ma'am the next thing you you even mentioned your husband you mentioned yes. your mentors in your college and your where you have taken your trainings etc and in your college space and all of the all of them you've given every them the, everybody their due respect and say yeah i've been inspired by all of them that's really very nice Thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Now we'd like to go down to your childhood. How were you as a little kid? Were you the naughty one, the shy one, the most mischievous one at home? I used to be a chubby, chicky, happy-go-lucky type girl, right? And a studious one. Uh, and uh, along with that, uh, I used to, you know, spend my life with my family members rather than friends. So that is why my, you know, childhood was really very different than other kids. Uh, i would not say that i was not naughty <laughs> i used to be that but still a balanced one and i like the way you said i was studious also i was a good student as well yes That's really very nice. earlier you mentioned as your inspiration your uncle yeah who you lost uh, during the covid time yes we are sorry for that but anyways he has been giving you a lot of courage and power to know yourself to know your path in life yeah because he used to question me a lot that why psychology he uh, he was a cardiologist right and he uh, had a friend uh, whom i know who is actually my inspiration as well uh, that ma'am was his friend and during that time he used to ask me questions that why psychology why are you diagnosing in this way right uh, why don't you make the let them free keep okay fine they are having this condition they, this is their condition why to stigmatize all the time so these questions na triggered me during that time you know i need to know more i need to understand people more so that i can serve in a better way and one thing he told me once that keep smile whatever the situation is right in the background something is going on maybe but in front of you the person is there he has come to you for the help and guidance to you right so you need to keep smile so this is what we are happy and if we are not able to find that one right that makes us feel like we are in dilemma we don't know what to do we don't know how to gain the happiness we don't know how to uh, find the happiness rather to say right so th this book will help everyone to understand how to find the purpose of life and how to be happy please go and read that book this book is totally based on japanese technique the ikigai the word is japanese right and uh, you will learn about life yes dear thank you so much ma'am for sharing definitely we will work on that book called as ikigai the japanese technique of making your life beautiful yes dear and finding out what you really want in life thank you very much ma'am for sharing that beautiful book the title of the book thank you so much the next question coming up in what way you would love to be remembered in this world and why should people remember monica das verma uh, okay uh, as a happy psychologist who always keeps a smile on her face and another thing is that 
uh, along with this, I would uh, ask people to remember me as a responsible daughter and a wife. I love that. Responsible daughter and a loving wife. Very great, ma'am. That's nice. A happy psychologist. A psychologist should not be in stress or, you know, always be in that sad zone. He or she should be in a very positive frame of mind such that the person or the clients who come in front of them also get that positive energy. True. Yes. No matter what is within you, but when you are, you know, conversing with others or sharing space with others, that's the moment you have to show your best. Yes. Exactly. And I guess, I, and I guess your uncle, has, I believe your uncle has taught you that, right? Yeah, true. Because he was a doctor and he has that experience in his life, right? So he taught me that thing that once the person is in front of you and you are in the clinic, forget about your background, forget about all those areas that something has going on, something is going on in your life. You are there as a therapist. You are there as a guide. So the person is in front of you is the person who needs the guidance and help from you. So keep smiling, help them to, you know, address their issue, make them independent enough so that they can be happy by their own. Yes, that's really very nice. Dear ma'am, have you been on a holiday? Have you taken a small break? Like you, if you're a psychologist, it is 24 by 7, 365 days. That much I understand. Have you been able to snatch a few days and go on a holiday? And if yes, your favorite destination? And if no, where do you love to go? Yeah, I love to go for holidays, right? And uh, our favorite destination is Jaipur. Why? <laughs> because uh, as I am married to a person who is from Rajasthan, and Jaipur is one of the place that is, uh, you know, uh, I feel that it is associated with my personality type somehow, a quite balanced city, what I say. So that is why my favorite destination is Jaipur. Wonderful, ma'am. When you say Jaipur, I've been there to Jaipur, I guess, around about 40 years back. Okay. When I was a little kid, below 10 years. But the weather is extreme cold and extreme climates. Am I right? Yes. Yes, dear. But it's a beautiful place. Yeah, it is a beautiful place. Um, though there are the climates are extreme, like winter is extreme and the you know summer is also extreme. But still, you will see uh, the colors. Everywhere it is colorful. The markets are colorful. People are colorful. And even you will find the modern culture along with the ancient period, like uh, that uh, Amir Forts, Vagera, uh, these things are there along with the modernity. So that is why I find that city is uh, very balanced after my city, Kolkata. Right? So that is why Jaipur is my favorite destination till now. And I guess Jaipur is called as the pink city. Yes. Right? Pink city. Yes. How is the lifestyle? Is it quite affordable to live over there, ma'am? Yeah, quite affordable. Uh, you know, uh, because what I find that uh, people are much more in a flow there. What I have found. It is not like that people are, uh, you know, running behind something. They're in a flow. So that city has certain point of stability, right? It has high culture. It has like a uh, culture of like people who are from middle class family. So everything is there. It is balanced till now uh, in my eyes. Yes, dear. A blend of traditional uh, values and modern values as well mixed together. Yes. True. Yes, and most mm -hmm. importantly, it is full of colors. Uh, whenever you will visit the market, whenever you will visit the roads, you will uh, find some, you know, uh, bougainville flowers everywhere, like pink city. So there are pink, there are colors, and it is happy one, I think. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I really would like to go back once again. I had been to one of my relatives' house, one of my aunt's house, long time back. Hope I make a trip again there. Yeah, please visit. At least and maybe we both will meet at the same time if at all you happen to travel. You, never you can know. connect with me during that time. Yes, dear. Yes, ma'am. Dear ma'am, are you a movie buff? Uh, kind of. Is there any movie connected to psychological aspects where you might have observed, yeah, this movie has something to share, a social message concentrating on the mental aspects of human beings? Is there anything you would like to share? Yes, Tears in the Gi, that one is the movie that actually, you know, uh, came up with the uh, clear thought about what is the job of a psychologist. Previously, people used to call us as uh, doctors of mad people, right? Uh, you people are dealing with mad people. You are a mad person, right? This is the way they used to uh, point us. 
not only uh, it is with us as a psychologist but also with the, the psychiatrists as well whoever is in this field people used to call them as doctors of mad but now people thanks to that movie dear zindagi uh, sharukh khan played the role of a psychologist there and uh, because of that movie now people are much more in this area okay the clinics are psychological clinics are like that it is not the you know uh, clinic of a doctor like white walls would be there and uh, only the table chair would be there and doctor will only prescribe medicine no i can share about about my uh, you know challenges to the person who is sitting in front of you as a therapist so that is why i am thankful to that movie and i want more movies like that so that they can give more messages to the society than for you know because mental health uh, we need to talk about mental health and it is very important to talk about it and this movie has played a very important role in that area if i am not mistaken was it alia but yes sharukh khan yes i have seen the movie but i didn't focus on the name but when you said sharukh as a therapist then i recollect that she was there yes right okay. right thank you for sharing that and thank you for giving me a, you know a chance to recollect what i've seen sometimes you just watch a movie without going into the title of the movie yeah that is why uh, i used to say that whenever you are doing something you need to be very mindful about that activity right mindfulness is a word that has been taken from the buddhism and it is a part of positive psychology nowadays and i do practice mindfulness and uh, it has been like five years right now now, now that i am practicing mindfulness in my practice uh, clinical right uh, so you need to be mindful mindful in the sense either we are in past right we are uh, uh, like th thinking about all those past thing and all and that makes us feel depressed a bit otherwise we are becoming anxious about our future so what about the present so mindfulness is all about that so next time whatever you will do right now we are mindfully in this interview right we are focusing in that particular interview this is all about mindfulness we don't eat mindfully we don't drink mindfully we don't watch a movie mindfully we need to be mindful about everything even if we are having some you know uh, conflict with our family or with somebody else that time also you need to be very mindful about what the person is you know uh, talking about right uh, what is the situation mainly then only you can actually help yourself and help others to be with that situation properly and solve the situation easily perfect ma'am thank you for that because most of the time i am not in the past i am not in the present i find myself in the future like who next and what next it's like even while eating so thank you for telling to be mindful when you do yes. something my dear friends we all have to be mindful and i have to take that from ma'am i am very honest on this and ma'am thank you so much and now i can say you are a perfect psychologist you know very well you balanced that answer so well for us thank you dear ma'am what is that inner quality within you that you love this is me monica i love myself i respect myself because this is the core inner quality of mine this is the real me see uh, i love myself for the person who i am with my strengths with my weaknesses it is not like that ki i only love myself for my strength see uh, because it will what will happen if i love only my strengths i will uh, you know uh, forget my weaknesses and some time it will pop up like this ki okay i forget to look at that point right and that may trigger my anxiety or depression right so that is why i love myself as a person uh, because i have uh, some areas which gives me strength that i can take easy decision right i can make uh, decisions easily i can uh, talk to anybody easily and uh, along with that uh, my weaknesses if you talk about it yeah i am a person who loves to sleep a lot and also this is a point of my this is also my uh, strength though i uh, consider it as a, a strength because uh, there are people who are not able to sleep well and i'm fortunate to enough that i can take sleep properly right along with that i'm a perfectionist which is my strength as well as sometimes it is my weakness why because uh, because of that because of this particular characteristics sometimes i am like okay time thoda that become the issue yes dear thank you for sharing all of that that's really nice and of course sleep as you said is really very essential you are blessed about it you are a perfectionist and we understand perfectionists want it perfect they take a little extra time but they want it perfect 
right. they want it to be done the way they think it is perfect and yes to be perfect is always good yes ma'am the next question coming up what if you win a lottery what are you going to do dear uh if i win a lottery first i will uh, you know uh, think in that way ki people who are in need how can i help them this is the first motto in my life and after that uh, i'll keep some money for my own self growth along with my growth of my family so this is it i'm not going to say that okay i'll only give that money to others i'll keep it a balance i'll give some money to people who are in need and we'll keep something for myself very true i like your honesty we'll share the money yeah i will keep some for myself for my future and i will share some with the less privileged with the less fortunate that's yes. very it's a very balanced way of living our life in case and we wish you get a big lottery ma'am such much thank you yes dear dear ma'am when you were in school now you're into psychology a senior corporate psychologist you know dealing with the sentiments the emotions of people apart from these you know the sentiments the emotions of people the thought process of people the mindset of people dealing with that enabling them to come out of it were you interested in sports and games when you were a school student yeah i am actually a table tennis player right and i love that particular thing uh, apart from that i used to play cricket as well so right. these two things are there in my life cool cool so you said cricket that's really nice yes even i now whenever i get a moment if i see the street kids playing over there i stop my bike and i said just give me one chance three balls and i just try to ban and they give me a chance and i just and if the ball goes off into somebody's window or door somewhere there you know immediately i'll give them the bat and say bye <laughs> that's very really nice yeah actually any kind of game is actually energy and for me uh, more than cricket uh, i love table tennis that gives me a lot of energy right so that these things are there in my life so there are lots of secrets huh so you good at <laughs> table tennis you good at being a great psychologist a great hum human being that's really nice a daughter a lovely wife and of course a good person as you said dear ma'am how did you feel when india lost the match yesterday what was uh, your feeling see, was it yesterday a, or day before yesterday i guess day before yesterday day before right. yesterday yeah so it's a game right and anything can happen though they have lost still they are our heroes and next time is there so it is not the only one game right there are more opportunities are coming back so this is it if i could ask you a question like this what would have been the cause for their loss and why did they lose it? i mean from your perspective what do you think went wrong uh i think that it was uh, some other area like uh, as uh, uh, shami's mother was not well she was in the hospital right oh. so what i uh, got news from uh, news channels and everywhere and some uh, what i felt that somehow uh, the team australia was much more confident than our indian team during that time it happens you know our mental state can vary uh, from time to time so this is what i think played i would i'm not going to say that it is the luck but somehow these things has there yes dear somewhere you're very right because the day they lost south africa i think no between south africa right. and uh, australia so mm -hmm. south africa lost and it was australia there was a different th thought in our process oh it is australia right. they're very tough so the mindset right. automatically played a role here in many of our minds most of us the moment australia won i felt something's not okay something's not digestible and it was a it happens yes. it happens no you know you will see in every situation uh, we do have some thought in our life mind right mind is the brain in action right so due to that thought we used to perform right so this is what creates some issue in our life uh, for say we uh, just found that okay australia won oh my god it's a tough team so unknowingly the anxiety triggered right so maybe this has worked i am assuming in this way because sports psychologists can uh, you know as uh, uh, talk about all those areas in more better way i am not a sports psychologist so as per my assumption this is the thing that has worked yes dear thank you for sharing all of that ma'am thank you so much i would like to know the difference now between smart work and hard work how would okay. you like to share that 
smart work in the sense a person who is able to manage the time well who know that uh, how to delegate the works which are not that much important and also the person who knows how to differentiate between urgent work and the important work see every work is important but among this important works one need to understand which one is urgent right based on the priority the person need to list down all those activities so a person who is smart enough who that person will plan his day accordingly based on the needs and you know importance and urgency in his personal life and his professional life and a person who is you know a smart worker will take more information about that activity that need to be done for that day so this is what smart work to me perfect ma'am i really love the way you put that so well hats off to you for that brilliant answer super dear ma'am any dream projects for the future would you like yeah, to yeah i i do have a dream project now the thing is that it is on process right now so i i'm not able to talk about it much right so it is coming yes yes we love that you fulfill your dream project and let it be a secret let it be under wraps once done you always welcome to share it on the international fab talks as well yes kabhi kabhi kehte hai na unhe se pehle nahi batana bata diye to yeah it is not exactly good exactly we lose the energy actually yes it has happened so many when i question this would you like to share it or would you like to just keep it a secret you would like to say yes or no yes dear thank you for sharing ma'am dear ma'am being a psychologist i would like you to just let me know the youngsters who are in the corporate sector the ones who are not in the corporate sector especially the youngsters should they start saving up for their retirement or for an emergency because many of them have not done it or not even doing it and many haven't done and today they are having a very sad you know old age they are struggling they don't have a penny and they don't have a home to stay yeah it is very important to plan the finance uh, i have learned from my life only because back in 2019 there were some accidents and everything it that was going on in my life right in my family and during that time those savings actually helped us so it is very important for a person to plan the finance properly either it is for own self after retirement or for your children because it actually helps us keep going see and it also gives us the sense of security okay i have that that thing with me right so even for the person who is not doing much still the person can you know plan something and go with that so goal settings are very important in case of financial uh, area thank you ma'am thank you very much for sharing thank you would you like to mention a few of your best friends today with us yes these have been my pillars of strength to thick and thin yeah my best friends are like though they are my parents my mother and my father and my brother they are my best friends along with my husband and yes of course along with them i have my best friends like my friends from college like sneha priya tama these people are there with me they are always with me so these people are there any school friends uh those college friends do who my name they are my school friends actually kisi ko chhod diye did you leave out anyone nahi because uh, you know uh, from my ma class there is a friend there are two friends anu and tazi they are also psychologists right and uh, they are working in schools and some other sectors so these people are also there but the thing is that uh, we don't get time to talk daily but when we are together we are i get that yes dear and how beautifully you started off i have these best friends my mom i said i was thinking like so and so and so names will come out first I said my mom my dad my brother my husband and these are my friends that's really nice dear dear ma'am what keeps you smiling that beautiful smile evergreen smile that is already there on you you know have beautiful a beautiful smile on your face how do you keep that always see uh, what i have learned from my life till date right and thanks to my uh, one of my senior sir sachitra sir who make me learn about this thing that you know there are many things in your life that can make you smile just keep on focusing all the small areas that you have even if you are struggling still you have these people in your life still you have these areas to be thankful for for now if i talk about all this area see 
this uh, interview session that is going on right now that is a cause for happiness right so that is making me smile so this is what we need to look forward that what we have in our life so this is my secret in life that i keep you know focusing on these areas okay fine i have this thing i have that thing okay right chalo chalte hain so this is how i go very nice being grateful for everything that you have yes gratitude because that actually uh, scientifically if you go through some uh, you know uh, scientific paper on gratitude that is talk that talks about that when we feel thankful for something that has happened in our life even if uh, the situation is wrong still you need to look into that area that previously previously i mentioned that my mother used to talk about all those area that the though the uh, you know situation is challenging still you are learning something from that particular situation so you need to be thankful for that situation that i learned from myself while i was uh, taking training on some uh, gratitude uh, therapy and all right so he said that you need to be thankful for that situation as well because because of that challenging situation you have developed that skill within you right so this will open up the way to feel the happiness and somehow it works with our brain function right so and it helps us to you know focus well and somehow uh, helps us to concentrate well and uh, this gratitude helps to wind down first right uh, if you are feeling anxious do practice gratitude that will help you so that is why uh, i practice it and this is our my secret super super My dear friends, if you would also love to have a beautiful smile on your face, you'd love to be happy, you'd love to be carefree, and you love to enjoy life. Develop gratitude. Be grateful for all that you have, and wish others good. Thank you so much, dear, for that. Now, a very important question, ma'am. Do you have any weakness for the sweets and chocolates, or you could say the savory stuff? Which yeah, one? I have. I have a very sweet tooth, so <laughs> that is my weakness. I would say, uh, I. cannot stop myself if there is a bowl full of ice cream or brownie so i cannot stop myself i don't have self control over these things it just seem to you same to you and i feel embarrassed especially when i go over to somebody's place and if it is on the table and they still didn't say yes you could have it they just kept it there i think now when i'm going to get a chance to take that quickly and you know taste it i want to see what's the taste if some it's something new that's really nice like so i also have a weakness a sweet tooth just like you Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, from where do you derive your strength? Is it from your parents again, or is there any other source that you derive that special strength to keep continuing your journey when you find your clients are tough to deal with? The thing is that, uh, as I already have mentioned, that my parents they are my root, and my partner, like my husband, is my strength along with my brother and all. Right, and also the thing is that I have learned in my life from. one of my uh, uncles you know uh, he once he told me that the, the situation was like that he was actually teaching me something and i'm like i know i know i know it was the situation and he's like stop saying i know first unlearn then learn right then this thing will help you to relearn the thing and that thing will help you to be flexible enough right so i was like during that time how to unlearn things i already know about all those stuff and he said you know that you know about all those stuff but there are many times that has happened that based on your mental health right based on your mental state you are learning things differently you are observing a movie based on a mental health one day second day you will observe that particular movie again with a different mental state so you need to keep a learning and attitude till death that will help you keep going so this is how i have learned i have that is why you said that i don't have any specific person who whom i like uh, the inspiration in my life i have different people whom from whom i have learned different things in my life perfect dear perfect that's really nice thank you so much for sharing all of that thank you we should be lifelong learners true right? Yes. that will actually help us to keep going uh, some way or the other it is like uh, there are some people who are like i know everything i don't need to learn anything so what will happen that may create some conflicts right so if we have the learning added we will pay attention to the person that okay fine let him finish first and after that i'll you know uh, take my things and jo bhi point rakhna hai etc yes dear. Dear ma'am, 
आपको कभी डर लगता है अगर लगता yes. है तो कब किस बात का डर डर तो लगता है डर तो सभी को लगता है डर के आगे ही जीत है थिंग इज दैट डर तभी लगता है वेन आई फाइंड दैट माई पेरेंट्स आर नॉट वेल राइट या फिर समबडी इज नॉट वेल ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम आई बिकम लिटल बिट यू नो एंशियस दैट दैट इज वेरी नेचुरल बिकॉज दैट वर्क एज अ यू स्ट्रेस फॉर मी एज वेल बिकॉज दैट दैट इज द सिचुएशन की वेन एवर देर देर इज अ पर्सन हुई लाइक आई एम नॉट वेल I always there. I try to be there and help the person as much as I can. So this is the area that वही चीज मुझे डर लगता है कि अगर कोई बीमार पड़ जाए, especially parents या फिर in-laws या फिर husband या फिर खुद. Yes, dear. Very true. I can relate to that because I'm, you know, I can resonate with you on this very much. Dear ma'am, आपको गुस्सा भी आता होगा या नहीं? ओके बहुत ज्यादा गुस्सा आ रहा है आई एम नॉट एबल टू कंट्रोल इट देन आई वॉट आई यूजली डू आई यूज टू यू नो मूव फ्रॉम दैट सिचुएशन इज टू ड्रिंक सम वॉटर आई यूज टू कंट्रोल माई ब्रीथिंग बिकॉज वेन एवर देर इज अचुएशन यू बिकमिंग एंग्री यू विल सी दैट देर आर सम चेंजेस इन योर ब्रेथ राइट यू आर टेकिंग ब्रेथ लाइक सो जस्ट टोन डाउन दैट हैव सम वॉटर स्प्लैश वॉटर ऑन योर फेस एंड नेक सो इट विल हेल्प यू टू रिलीज or help you to come down easily so this is how i uh, how i used to manage when i am like a little bit higher thank you thank you so much now next time if i get angry i'm going to splash some water on my face on my neck and make me feel yeah uh, you need to work on the breaths actually mainly just take slow breaths sabse pehle move from that particular situation try to move right because what happens in any situation when you are able to understand that okay the anger is developing inside me because of the situation so if you stand there for more time that will you know that is not going to help you so it is better ki okay fine we can talk about it later give some time i need to have some water i'm not feeling good aise bol ke thoda sa side leke just work on yourself perfect perfect move away from that situation which angers you so don't stand mm-hmm. there and increase the situation or make it more difficult just push away and come back later very nice ma'am may i know your favorite color yeah it's blue why so <laughs> dear yeah, it is because first of all it is uh, associated with deep blue sea yeah it is associated with depth it is associated with knowledge and somehow it is also the color of uh, you know uh, profession proper right professionals uh, used to wear black and blues i love even i currently i am actually wearing the blue uh, darkest blue so <laughs> it is maybe you are assuming as a black right so blue is my color because uh, what i have found that whenever i wear blue i feel more confident right uh, it is like my color so this is it perfect perfect thank you so much for sharing now ma'am we go back to your school when you were in school what was your favorite subject okay my school biology was my favorite subject right along with that uh, as i am i was in a bengali medium school uh, bengali language and the english language those two classes were like my favorite one along with the biology and please maths no maths same here no maths like you <laughs> yes dear. dear ma'am now i'd like you to share a, a a very what you could say an interesting proverb or a quote jo aapko acha laga muhavra ya kaha what they say that a nice quotation could it could be your favorite the thing, the thing is that when i was in uh, my masters i was doing my masters during that time uh, while our internship was going on in rjgar medical college right during that time i used to tell my friend that they used to tell that the life is very stressful that life is very stressful and i'm like so the life is very stressful still it is beautiful right because we are together we are serving people and all so that become my favorite quote right that though the life is stressful but still it is 
beautiful and it has different reason to smile. Yes, life is beautiful and we have many reasons to smile. Right. Do you know, till date, what what is that you achieve that may, makes you feel wow and proud? Wow, this is the greatest achievement of my life till date. Till date, there are two things, right? The thing is that uh, I have achieved the career that I wanted, right? And the second thing is uh, I have achieved me as a human being that my mother wanted to become, right? So she wanted me to work properly. She wanted me to handle myself properly, right? She wanted me to achieve my career. There was actually no such pressure that you need to become a doctor, you need to become an engineer. That was not there. But uh, one thing was that, that you need to become a good human being, right? You need to earn for yourself, right? It is not like that uh, you are only studying. Just use it, right? So that I have achieved and I made everyone feel proud of. Very nice. I like the way you said, no, I've achieved what I want to achieve because my mom wanted me to achieve this and this really gives me happiness and it's the proudest feeling. I feel proud. The proudest feeling, the yes. accomplishment, like I became what my mother wanted me to become. Right, because from my childhood, I used to, you know, carry my father's office bag and I'm like, I am going to office. So from childhood, it was there because I used to, uh, you know, he worked as a role model in my life somehow. So when I started my first job, right, I really bought that kind of bag only to take the feel that i am also going to my going to my office like my father my mother use uh, my mother is a housewife but she's also an inspiration in that area so this is perfect and when you shared that i could imagine you with that that little girl monica with the little with a bag your dad's you know office bag and walking about here and there and pretending to go to office and now it's a reality right yes it is the reality that is why i maintain so many things like him I have so many areas like uh, the way he used to, uh, you know, write down all, everything in a diary. I have different diaries for different things. Though uh, we are now in AI era, I would say, right? AI is there to solve out all those problems. But still, I follow some, you know, old school methods. Like I used to, I write phone numbers on diary. I write things on my diary because I think that is, that is also kind of cognitive exercise I am doing. I'm helping my brain. I'm helping myself only. So, writing is also a very important part in my life. Perfect. And I am with you. I do the same. I really love that. If anybody you know has the same thing, I really feel good. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. like old-fashioned, maybe old-school, you say. But yes, I love it that way. Yes. Yeah, this, this actually helps us keep going. It, it actually helping us to, you know, uh, maintain the sense of security, I would say. Very true. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am. Do you love pets? Do you have a pet at home? Yes, I love a lot. Actually, we love pets a lot. We have rabbits, we have birds. So we have many pets at our home. And uh, we would say that we are pet freaks. Wonderful. That's really nice. To give space to other living beings to live. Wonderful, dear. Dear ma'am, the next question coming up is, how would you look at the people who are suffering in in toxic relationships. They don't even know that they are in a toxic relationship. It could be the workspace. It also could be their own homes. It could be with their children or with their spouse, in-laws. Yeah, uh, the thing is that people are not aware about this area, as you already have mentioned, that they don't know what is a toxic relationship, right? What are those areas a person should, you know, understand? There may be the abuse, either it is uh, the verbal abuse or either it is a, uh, uh, a physical abuse or it is uh, sexual abuse abuse is abuse emotional abuses are also there people are not aware about that but in uh, feudal life as i already have mentioned that apart from wedding city i'm also associated with feudal life and in that uh, organization we are working with stress and anxiety and along with that we are working with some other areas of relationship where we are focused on these areas because people are coming up with all those areas like you know my partner is not uh, that much um, uh, you know uh, the way I have expected he's not that like he's not like that or she's not like that or my office is not that much you know happy place so we are working with that area that 
we are making them understand what is an emotional abuse what is an right uh, what is an abuse in a way right and how to deal with that because we are there are some people who are uh, having characteristics of narcissism right there are some uh, words you might have known that um, ghosting breadcrumbing right gaslighting these are the words what are those uh, words and why it is associated with abuse how people can abuse people and how people can gaslight people uh, through virtual life and also we are working in different way so we need to be very aware that sometimes it happens that maybe our heart is like na na it's okay though he is or she is behaving in that way still i love them but the question is do that person love me do that person is actually in love of uh, you know uh, sharing the true love so this is how we need to understand even we need to understand that uh, the person standing in front of you right is that person using you or not right so these are some areas that one need to understand one need to um, you know be aware about it because uh, day by day if you uh, look at the uh, i mean society you will find that the uh, emotional quotient is becoming lower people are not able to uh, relate with others in emotion even they are not able to understand their own emotionalities as well so that is why these things are there and uh, if you people are want to know more about it please do connect with me i will help you to know about it more thank you ma'am for sharing all of that that was really very nice thank you so much when you use the word narcissism so my ears were sharp there are many people suffering with the narcissists yes we have to be saved and you would like to get any help you could connect with our special celebrity a corporate psychologist and of course it's not only for the corporate sector anybody out there would like to avail her services and connect with her you are most welcome uh, she is monica das verma from kolkata kolkata ma'am yes Kolkata, West Bengal, India. Yes, friends. Because suddenly I get a shock. Like maybe have I said the correct place? I recently interviewed someone from another state, and so then I just held on for a minute. Yes, dear. Now, as we spoke about Kolkata, you will be very proficient in Bengali. Mm -hmm. You can speak Bengali very well. English, you are also speaking too well, uh, greatly and nicely. Apart from these two languages, which are the other languages you could speak and converse in? yeah i can converse in hindi and currently i am i have started learning rajasthani marwadi language right because um, though i am based in kolkata uh, is it is my fault i haven't mentioned about it to you uh, as i am married to a rajasthani person my husband is from rajasthan so currently i am staying there uh, with him in rajasthan uh, so that is why I, st I have started learning the local language first because that is going to help me only while dealing with people so uh, english bengali hindi and now the rajasthani language Ma'am, now I have a small request. Would you oblige to sing a song in any one of these languages? Choti si gana. Oh, hey, baap re. Choti si. Okay. Uh... Yes, friends, we've given a, we've made a little request to our celebrity to sing a song for us. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just give me two minutes then. <laughs> yes, dear. You can go ahead. Till then, I'll keep the audience engaged. I'll keep the sure. guests engaged. So, dear friends. We've requested ma'am to sing a song for us because when she sings, we're going to enjoy the song. And of course, there would be meaning in the song. Every song out there has some meaning or the other. And that's why we love our celebrities to share a little song. Yes, friends. I just remember two lines right now, right? Uh, because I'm not a singer. And it is a favorite song of my husband. And it is a Bengali song. Uh, you must have know about this song because uh, Amitabh Bachchan once he also, uh, you know, एक बार उन्होंने भी गाया था हिंदी और बंगाली मिक्स करके. That is the Akla Chalu. जो दी तोर डाक सुने क्यों ना आया शे तो बे अकला चलो रे जो दी तोर डाक सुने क्यों ना आया शे तो बे अकला चलो रे 
একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো রে যদি তোর ডাক শুনে কেউ না আসে তবে একলা চলো রে যদি কেউ কথা না কয় ওরে ও রে ও বাকা কেউ কথা না কয় I'm sorry, I forgot after that. Uh, though the meaning of this song is like, uh, you can work alone, right? Because you are your own best friend, right? You need to understand yourself. You need to understand your needs. Uh, you need to love yourself. But yes, it self-love is not selfishness. Uh, but you need to be very conscious about this thing area that... Uh, narcissist na ban jao right uh, that also you need to understand you you don't need to be self obsessed but you need to keep balance right even if it is even it is like there is nobody but you have yourself with your own self right you have you so move uh, move you can move alone right so akla chalo re perfect ma'am and you said you uh, you don't have a good voice you really have a good voice bahut <laughs> achhi and i love it yes It's a wonderful song. Thank you for sharing and explaining the meaning in English as well. Thanks. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, if, if the Almighty or the universe was to offer you a superpower and they would give you the chance to select the superpower of your choice, what would that be? Uh, yeah, uh, for that thing, I will ask him uh, one thing that uh, one power uh, key if there is somebody who is not uh, able to have food ek chutki bajate a plate of food in front of that person wow. that i want badhiya bahut badhiya i love this you know chutki bajao and then you get the food for the people who don't have food on their table what right. a great it what is... a gift you are asking that's such a beautiful gift yeah because see uh, money if i give money to person the money can be taken away by other person right but if i am offering a person food right that can help the person to feel happy and this thing actually i am like inspired by a movie by satyajit ray gupi bagha right and in that movie that was a situation that um, uh, bhuter raja right bhut ka jo raja tha he like asked for that i will give you three uh, wish right you can fulfill your three wish so among that wish they uh, one was there that food whenever they will clap the food will be there in front of them so i want that wish ki chalo um, i want to fulfill my wish in this way ki chutki pe jaate ek plate khana dusre ke paas jinke paas khana nahi hai perfect very nice such a beautiful way to think of everybody to fill their stomach in fact many crimes in the world you know take place because they would love to feed fill up their stomach exactly. they say papi exactly. pet ka sawal hai they say right exactly even exactly. they may wear torn clothes they may be mm-hmm. half naked as well but still they they can't go without food like they are ready exactly. to eat just anything that they get stale exactly. food standing near dustbins and having food which is being thrown off yes dear that's a wonderful food point. is food is fuel in our life right it will help you to keep going if you have food you will see that there is a good energy in your body right and it will help you to be positive it will help you to and why it is help you to feel uh, feel positive because our gut system that is the oldest brain that actually generates 95% of serotonin level in our body right and serotonin is a happy hormone so again it is associated with our happiness and mood so that is why food is the main thing very true ma'am very nice and i love the way you put that so beautifully across the table Dear ma'am, in the next fifty years, what are the two changes you visualize and would want? Uh, see, uh, if I look at the world right now, the way AI is taking the place everywhere, uh, uh, I can uh, remember one thing that in my childhood I saw a movie. It was animated one that the world full of robots and everything was so modernized and people are having their own uh, you know airplane kind of thing box box kind of airplane was there right so these things would be there along with that uh, the number of psychologists will increase and the importance of psychologists will increase because you know it is a true fact that people are forgetting how to be happy people are forgetting how to love themselves how to love others so these are the changes you will find and there will be like people who will share more positivity in the world so this is how i think the world will become after 2050 yes or so after 50 years 50 years ma'am now we go into the past 
If at all a time machine was given in your hand now at present, you have to just click one of the buttons that will take you into the past era. You have to go there and relive somebody's life. The task is to relive somebody's life. Whose life you would love to choose and relive? Uh, obviously, Freud, Sigmund Freud, uh, because he is the father of psychoanalysis and I want to understand the, you know, his uh, areas, right? Uh, that what makes him think in that beautiful way that, what how life force is working from birth till death right so this is what i want to learn yes dear thank you ma'am thank you very much i really like the way you, you shared that just now ma'am what about constructive criticism it happens at the workplace it happens in our homes in our families with friends how should one take them some are very sensitive they can't even take constructive criticism they'll go up to the thoughts of suicide or absenteeism etc Right. See, criticism in our society from childhood till date, people are talking about like, if the person is criticizing you, that means something is wrong within you. No, the thing is wrong. The concept is wrong. Criticism means a person is giving his own perception about you. Right. It is up to you. You are going to take it or delete it. Right. So for say you are wearing a uh, you know uh, fluorescent green colored sari in more in the morning at seven seven o'clock right and you are like okay I'm feeling good after wearing this but there are some people who are like in the morning subha kon pehenta hai you are not looking good etc vagera they will criticize you and you will feel bad about it okay I have done wrong but you haven't done wrong there is nothing wrong and right right you loved it then it is right. But the thing is that you need to understand that what did they said, right? What was the uh, sentence? What was those words they have used? What was the tone? What was the actual thing, right? That you have to analyze. So uh, that I have learned from my one of my teacher that is uh, Abraham sir. He said that it is kind of feed forward to you, right? They are giving their uh, feedbacks or feed forwards based on their perception based, and the perception is based on their previous experience in their life, right? So it is up to you. You are going to take it or you are not going to take it. So whenever the person is criticizing you, mindfully listen to that person that what the person is, you know, pointing on, right? And if there are things that you feel that you need to rectify, work on that, right? There is nothing wrong in working on all those areas, right? Because it is not like that you are always right. And the person is always wrong. So you need to think in that way also. So maintain a flexible personality by this way. Perfect, ma'am. Thank you very much for sharing and making that very clear. You've been even quoting one of your you know, sirs who's have, who has helped you to make yes. you understand how to take criticism. It is their perception. If it yes. is good for you, you please do it. Right. Yes. You put it very well across. You made us understand very well. Like there are areas where we have to improve. We have to accept the criticism and go on. But there are certain times where you should understand that they have a different perception and we have a different one. We have to respect right. us and not to feel bad about it. Right. Yes. That is why you just mentioned the example of the color of the sari. Right. You like it, but the other person like don't like it. So that is their problem. They don't like it. You loved it. You're, you should feel with the thing what you have. That's it. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Dear ma'am, we thank you so much for being with us. We've come to an end to the main round of the interview. We have a small segment called as the rapid fire round. It will just take five minutes. May I take sure. another five minutes? Sure. Thank you. Dear friends, we had a lovely time getting to know the thoughts, views, and the experience, the wisdom from our special celebrity. Yes, dear. She is Monica Varmada. Monica Das Varma, am I right? Yes. Excuse me, mispronounce the name. And if I do also forgive me because it happens. Nobody's perfect. True. Yes, yes. So we go now with the rapid fire round. Ma'am, here, uh, you would have to select one of the options given to you. Either one word or two words, the answers should be. Yes, dear, a brief session. So dear friends, let's go ahead and find out our likes, not our likes, the likes and dislikes of our special celebrity, Miss Monica. Dear ma'am, a perfect day in one word. Uh, full of happiness. When you help others, do you expect anything in return? No. City, village or town? Uh, city. 
because I am you know born and brought up in city, so I prefer city mostly. Land, water, or air? Water. Favorite season? Winter. Chocolates, ice cream, cakes. Ice cream, obviously. Favorite flavor? Strawberry flavor and chocolate flavor. Do that's nice. Miss Monica is a good cook. Yes or no? Yes, I am. Great. Your favorite, the name of your favorite recipe? Biryani, mushroom biryani that I cook in my own way. Great. The name of your favorite teacher or sir? Uh, my favorite teacher is uh, one of my Bengali teacher from my school. Uh, I'm Mukti ma'am. And another teacher is uh, from my psychology, uh, uh, my HOD of my college, Ishita uh, Singh uh, Chatterjee ma'am and uh, Surangama ma'am. She is my guru as well. And along with them, D. Dr. Rai sir is also there and Sachitra sir is also there. Many, many favorites. <laughs> yes. Great. That's really nice. To see the good in everyone and to share the good and accept the good from others. Yeah, ma'am, is it salty, sweet, spicy or sour food? Sweet, obviously. Sweet. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, is it money, happiness or both? Uh, both, because both are interrelated. Are you an introvert, extrovert or ambivert? Ambivert one. When you are alone, ma'am, nobody's with you. You're in a room. I can spend my day well with Pardon? my creativity. So I can spend my day well with myself, with some creativity, making foods or watching something that is interesting one. So I can spend well. But I'm going to change the question for you. Now. Okay. <laughs> the question is, you're all alone. Nothing is in your room. You just have a chair and you're sitting down there and a small window with little sunshine entering into your room. No gadgets as well. No, nobody else with you. You are connected to your thoughts. And where do your thoughts take you? Into the past, present or future? Fine. That will help me to, you know, mindfully observe the environment. That is an interesting thing that uh, I have done many times. So this one is the thing that I will do. Otherwise, I will sleep. Yes, dear. Thank you for sharing. You love socializing or me time? I love both based on my mood. Yes. Are you a thinker, a doer or both? Uh, I am doer mostly. Home cooked food or food ordered from out? Home cooked food. Early bird, night owl? Night owl. Fresh fruits, fresh salads or fried food? Fresh foods, fresh sa uh, salad mainly. Because fried foods I like but you know it is the trouble one. Experiential learning or theoretical learning? Experiential learning with some theory. Are you a beach person or a forest person? Beach person. You love to sing or dance or both? Uh, it is like based on situation but uh, I like to sing mostly. Yes. Dear. You'd love to walk, ride a two-wheeler or drive a four-wheeler? Walk. A little table is there, a lovely book and great music. What would you choose first? Music. Thank you, ma'am. The best day in the week? Sunday. Your favorite number? My favorite number is eight. Is it tea yes. or coffee? Uh, coffee. You love to give gifts or receive gifts? I love to give gifts. Yes, dear. Thank you so much, ma'am. There's one last request which we have from you. Thank you for your time and thank you for taking extra time. I guess I've taken a lot of time. I've crossed the limit of one hour. Thank you so much. One last question, request, ma'am. As we all know that there are three magical words. They are please, sorry, and thank you. Worldwide, we use them when we converse, discuss with others. It makes our life easier and it adds magic to our life. Apart from please, sorry, and thank you, we keep it aside. And we make a request to our, all our celebrities on the International Fab Talks to share three additional positive words which could create a magical effect in our lives. Yeah, that is I love myself. Wow. I really because, like that. Yeah, because this is the one that we need to uh, understand when to learn. Because uh, with time, we have we are forgetting to love, my, love our own self. 
so i love myself these three little magical words that you need to remember the day you love yourself is the best day and you will continue a beautiful journey you'll begin to love others you'll begin to respect others yes when you treat yourself good here within you're going to do it out for others as well yes dear when you learn to prioritize yourself ma'am you've really done justice today for to the last one especially you know uh, i love myself that's really nice everyone should keep saying this you've done justice right from the start till the end whatever you have shared you know it very beautifully i came out in the end that yes one should love their self one should respect their self themselves and of course you can see the best in others like they say when you're uh, on a flight you know wear the oxygen mask the first you you save yourself then think of saving others so love yourself then you start to love and understand others yeah it is because we are like the bottle who used to you know uh, give water to everyone but what about the bottle if it is the empty it if it is empty one so you need to feel yourself as well so that is why you need to love yourself then only you can spread love among others yes dear thank you so much ma'am we had a good time with you and it was a rewarding time and of course we have learned a lot and i like the way you've answered many of the questions i mean all of the questions i should say with a smile on your face and still now you have that beautiful smile thank you very much keep smiling and stay connected thank you thank you everyone and thank you especially to you because you know you have cooperated me with uh, i mean cooperated me with uh, with me well uh, from that day till now and thanks for this uh, wonderful session as well thank you dear thanks for being a part of the international fab talks we love to have you on many more fab talks sure yes dear giving you lots of love and happiness yes thank you shine so bye 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 man bye Dear friends, with this, we'd like to sign off from the International Fab Talks. Thank you for being with us. Stay tuned and stay connected. We love to connect with you, with new celebrities, to allow you to learn from them, to learn how they've overcome their challenges and how they could inspire you and empower you. Stay safe.